Hello everyone, today we're going to talk about element number 32, germanium. Many other substances are now used as semiconductors, but germanium remains of primary importance in the manufacture of transistors and of components for devices such as rectifiers and photocells. So in addition to its applications in electronic devices, germanium is used as a component of alloys and in phosphors for fluorescent lamps. Because germanium is transparent to infrared radiation, it is employed in equipment used for detecting and measuring such radiation such as windows and lenses. The high index of refraction of germanium dioxide renders it a valuable component of glass used in optical devices such as wide-angle lenses for cameras and microscope objectives. The toxicology of germanium and its compounds is poorly defined. Thanks to germanium element number 32, when we take a photograph with a wide-angle lens, we're able to capture more of the scene than we would be able to with a normal varied lens that would be made out of silicon or another type of metal. Germanium is a semiconductor. A semiconductor material has an electrical conductivity value falling between that of a conductor, such as metallic copper, and an insulator, such as glass. Its resistivity falls as its temperature rises. Metals behave in the opposite ways, according to Wikipedia. The number of valence electrons of semiconductors are four. So germanium is a semiconductor. The pure element was commonly doped with arsenic, gallium, or other elements and used as a transistor in thousands of electronic applications. Today, however, other semiconductors have replaced it. So germanium oxide, seen here, we have germanium oxide, consisting of germanium, seen here, and two oxygen atoms. Germanium oxide has a high index of refraction and dispersion, which means that it reflects light very widely. This makes it suitable for use in wide-angle camera lenses and objective lenses for microscopes. This is now the major use for this element. So germanium's major uses today are for lenses, for microscope objectives, allowing infrared light through as a window, and in wide-angle lenses, and various other components. So germanium is also used as an alloying agent. Adding 1% germanium to silver stops it from tarnishing. It's also used in fluorescent lamps or as a catalyst. Catalysts speed up chemical reactions. They lower the activation energy required for a reaction to take place. So both germanium and germanium oxide are transparent to infrared radiation and so are used in infrared spectroscopes. Here we have infrared spectroscopy. Infrared spectroscopy is the measurement of the interaction of infrared radiation with matter by absorption, emission, or reflection. It is used to study and identify chemical substances or functional groups in solid, liquid, or gaseous forms, according to Wikipedia. Here we have an image of a catalyst. Germanium is a catalyst as well. So germanium compounds in which germanium is in the 2 plus oxidation state are well categorized as solids, and in general they are readily oxidized. Elemental germanium can be electrodeposited from many solutions and melts of its compounds. So electrodeposition looks like this. It's one substance of a metal depositing on another metal. So germanium can be electrodeposited on other metals. It is of interest that as little as one milligram of dissolved germanium per liter seriously interferes with the electrodeposition of zinc. So in addition to its applications in electronic devices, germanium is used as a component of alloys and in phosphorus for fluorescent lamps. Because germanium is transparent to infrared radiation, it is employed in equipment used for detecting and measuring such radiation, such as windows and lenses. Germanium GE, a chemical element between silicon and tin in group 14 of the periodic table, a silver gray metalloid intermediate in properties between the metals and the nonmetals. So although germanium was not discovered until 1886 by Clemens Winkler, a German chemist, its existence, properties, and position in the periodic system had been predicted in 1871 by the Russian chemist Dmitry Ivanovich Mendeleev. So he predicted germanium in 1871, and Clemens Wrinkler discovered it physically in 1886 in an ore, Dimitri. He called this hypothetical element, since he hadn't physically seen it, he called it echosilicon. The name germanium derives from the Latin word germania, or Germany, and was given to the element by Winkler. Here's an image of Germany in 1886 CE. Germanium did not become economically significant until after 1945, when its properties as a semiconductor were recognized as being of value in electronics. Germanium was discovered by Clemens A. Wrinkler at Freiburg, Germany in 1886. Its existence had been predicted by Mendeleev, who predicted its atomic weight would be about 71 and that its density around 5.5 grams per centimeters cubed. In September of 1885, a miner working in the Himmler's first silver mine near Friedberg came across an unusual ore. It was passed to Alvin Weishbeck at the nearby mining academy, who certified it was a new mineral, and asked his colleague Winkler to analyze it. This is his mining hat. So he gives the ore to Alvin Weishbeck. He's a colleague of Winkler. He was born December 6, 1833. So Winkler found its composition to be 75% silver, 18% sulfur, and 7% which he could not explain. It was an unknown element. We now know that it's germanium. But back then, it was unknown, so it was pretty exciting. So by February of 1886, he realized it was a new metal-like element and its properties were revealed. It became clear that it was the missing element below silicon, as Mendeleev had predicted, the mineral from which it came to be known as Argodet, or AG8GES6, consisting of 8 atoms of silver, 1 atom of germanium, 
and six atoms of sulfur. So germanium, after silicon, the semi-metal germanium is the second most important semiconductor used in computer microchips. It is mostly found in ores of silver, lead, and copper. Here we have germanium, the carbon elements. I am the granddaddy of the electronics industry. Poised somewhere in between a metal and a non-metal, I have special abilities as a semiconductor. I was used in the very first transistors, but now have been replaced by silicon. Nonetheless, I make myself useful in fiber optic cables, flashing info across the globe. Zap! Germanium's date of discovery was in 1886. Its density is 5.323 grams per centimeters cubed. Its melting point is 938.9 degrees Celsius or 1720 degrees Fahrenheit. Its boiling point is 2820 degrees Celsius or 5,108 degrees Fahrenheit. So continuing on, how is germanium made? So germanium is widely distributed in nature, but is too reactive to occur free. Primary minerals include argodite, from which it was first isolated, germanite, rarinite, and canfieldite. All of them are rare. Only germanite and rarinite have been used as commercial sources for the element. So trace quantities of germanium are found in certain zinc blends, in sulfitic ores of copper and arsenic, and in coals. The latter possibly a consequence of the concentration of the elements by plants of the Carboniferous period in geologic history. Certain present-day plants are known to concentrate germanium. So in refining germanium, the low-grade residues obtained from its ores are treated with strong hydrochloric acid, and the resulting germanium tetrachloride is distilled, purified by repeated distillation, and hydrolyzed to form germanium dioxide. Here we have germanium dioxide. Here we have germanium chloride. Here we have hydrochloric acid. Again, remember the dangers of acids. Remember to use them with proper care, precautions, mindfulness. In refining germanium, the low-grade residues obtained from its ores are treated with strong hydrochloric acid, and the resulting germanium tetrachloride is distilled, purified by repeated redistillation, and hydrolyzed to form germanium dioxide, which is then reduced by hydrogen to a powdery form of the metal that is melted at a temperature of about 1,100 degrees Celsius or 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit. This is done in an inert atmosphere and cast into ingots or billets. The the element is brittle rather than ductile. The atoms in the crystal are arranged as are the carbon atoms in diamond, which makes sense because germanium is in the same group as carbon. So the electrical and semiconducting characteristics of germanium are comparable to those of silicon. It is not attacked by air at room temperature, but is oxidized at 600 degrees to 700 degrees Celsius or 1,100 degrees to 1,300 degrees Fahrenheit. Oxidized again means that it combines with the oxygen in the air to become germanium oxide. Here we have a reduction, the opposite of oxidization of germanium. When you combine germanium with hydrogen, the hydrogen gets oxidized and the germanium gets reduced, as we talked about in the iron episode, reduction and oxidation. The reason it's called reduction, again, is because the metal is losing oxygen. The reason it's called oxidation is because something else is gaining the oxygen or the halogen or whatever reactive element that it's binding to. So it is not attacked by air at room temperature, but is oxidized when heated up to 600 to 700 degrees Celsius or 1,100 to 1,300 degrees Fahrenheit, and it reacts quickly with the halogens to form tetrahalides. One, two, three, four, chlorine, and one germanium atom. Although aqueous caustic solutions produce little effect on it, germanium dissolves rapidly in molten sodium hydroxide or potassium hydroxide, thereby forming the respective germanites. Germanium forms stable oxidation states of plus 2 and plus 4, the compounds of the latter being more stable and numerous. The two most important compounds of germanium are the dioxide and the tetrachloride GeCl4. Germinates formed by heating the dioxide with basic oxides, including zinc germinate, which consists of two atoms of zinc, one atom of germanium, and four atoms of oxygen, Zn2GeO4. It's used as phosphor, a substance that emits light when energized by radiation. And when it's emitting light, it's called phosphorescence. Here the halogens mentioned, it forms tetrahalides with germanium. Not necessarily acetine because it's too radioactive. So on a weight basis, germanium is a scarce but not an extremely rare, about 1.5 parts per million element in the Earth's crust, equaling in abundance beryllium, molybdenum, and cesium, and exceeding the elements arsenic, cadmium, antimony, and mercury seen here. In the cosmos, the atomic abundance is much less than those of a number of the heavier elements, e.g. bromine, strontium, tin, barium, mercury, and lead. All of the elements of lower nuclear charge than germanium except beryllium, boron, scandium, and gallium are cosmically more abundant than germanium. Cosmically, germanium is believed to be one of the many elements formed by neutron absorption after the initial process of hydrogen and helium burning and alpha particle absorption. The five stable isotopes of germanium occur in the following relative amounts. Germanium 70, 20.5%, germanium 72, 27.4%, germanium 73, 7.8%, germanium 74, 36.5%, and germanium 76, 7.8%. There are nine reported radioactive isotopes of germanium. These are the stable isotopes. 
An isotope is an element with the same number of protons but different number of neutrons. So that was germanium explained in 20 minutes less. If you like this video, make sure to like, comment, subscribe. Other than that, thank you everyone for watching. Have a great one. Stay tuned for the next videos.